morning, my name is Jackie, curate at St Luke's Crosby and welcome to our Sunday morning worship. Today is Trinity Sunday and we gather together either physically in our own homes or in the power of the Holy Spirit, we gather together united in one heart. Last week we celebrated Pentecost, that great gift of the Holy Spirit, and today is Trinity Sunday. And this is the day where the church celebrates the most holy trinity, that is God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amanda's going to talk to us a little bit later on about this um, and also there are resources for Trinity Sunday for our young folk. Um, some resources there just to be available on St Luke's website. So we're just going to take a little moment of quiet before we begin our service. And while we do that, I'm going to light three candles in the representation of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. We are all welcome as we share this time together. God is with us and his spirit draws us closer. And we're now going to continue with our worship and we're going to sing our first song, which will be led by Paul, Kim, and we're going to sing together, Holy, Holy, Holy. So let's sing. to listen to two scripture readings, Matthew 28, which is to be read by Sylvia, and 2 Corinthians 13, read by Kim. 
The first reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. And it's taken from the NRSV Bible. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The second reading is taken from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 to 13, reading from the Good News Bible. And now, my brothers, goodbye. Strive for perfection. Listen to my appeals. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a brotherly kiss. All God's people send you their greetings. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It's wonderful to be with you this Sunday. Today is Trinity Sunday, so one of my favourite Sundays of the whole church calendar. Not because it really changes anything in uh, that it's a Sunday, but just because it gives me that excuse to think about the Trinity so, and to talk about God as the Trinity. So we're going to pray and just ask God to be the one that really speaks to us, not me, um, and that he would take my words and use them in his way to bless us and to teach us what he knows each of us individually needs to know this morning so let's just be still for a moment and pray lord i thank you that we can take time to look at your word for us and to explore who you are in for us and us in you help us to learn of you today to put aside our preconceptions and to be open to new understanding and learning May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts and minds be pleasing to you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So the reality of knowing God as a trinity and not as a single person is one that I enjoy hugely. At its heart, it's a concept that's about grace, love and community. And during my sabbatical last year, I continued to design and make a stole with the image on the front representing the Trinity. And I brought it in to show you this morning. It's not finished. So you can see I can put my hand here behind the fire. That's just loosely pinned on. There's lots to do still. And this image, the whole of it, represents the Trinity. The image starts in a fire. As for me, the fire embodies passion, heat and sacrifice and so love. And as the image of the fire rises up one side, it ends on the other side in an interwoven representation of three persons. Now these are three different colours. I don't know if you can see that properly, Um, but there's silver, there's gold and there's copper. So it's got three colours interwoven and then highlights in red and purple and gold. So we've got gold beading down here there will be on the other two when I finished it that's still happening Um, and they're the colours of sacrifice majesty and love I've used techniques of couching and applique felt making and beading none of that is quick so it's coming along nicely but quite slowly but I'm not trying to rush it either a sitting and doing this project has been a prayerful and joyful way of sitting with my God as Father Son and Holy Spirit been a way of helping to think about that, to think about what images I would use to represent God, to think about how I put different images together as a representation of him. You might like to think about how you, in images, see God, understand God, how those images can help you to know him better. 
But beyond the chance to explore the image and concept of the Trinity like this, I also love how the idea teaches me to live practically. As I understand it, the Trinity goes way beyond any theological concept and is at the very heart of my faith and passion for God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It's a defining idea behind how I want to live, who I want to be and what I understand about church and the world. Often those outside the Christian faith and teachings assume we worship three gods, as if they were separate people, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, all separate. But the whole thing about God is that he or she, they, is actually better, isn't a person at all. That's how we tend to think of God, as a person and someone a bit like us. And they are a person in many ways, but God is far more than a single person. God is actually a relationship, a community, a relationship of three together. And we often name those three as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, which is fine as long as you can think of those three as all equal. Generally, we can't. We make them hierarchical as if one comes from another or one is more important than another or more powerful or stronger or better in some way. They are all different but they are all equal and their differences make their togetherness stronger. Their differences are the sum of the whole Godhead shared out amongst the three. So when we speak of God as king or judge or creator or redeemer or lover or brother or helper or encourager or indwelling, surrounding, above or beside or even as an energy or a light or a power of love, we speak of the different persons of God and could link each of those names with either the Father or the Son or the Spirit or the whole together. The names signify relational roles God has with us as one of the three persons of God. But those three persons are all together our one amazing God. Those three persons are so closely loving of each other and so much of one mind and heart and will that they are one being, three in one and one in three. Often if I take time to reflect on God as a trinity, then the sense of love and freedom, of grace and nurture, of equality and generosity, inherent in such a mutual relationship of three, moves me to worship and prayer. This isn't like earthly relationships where so often the inequality in power or age or ability can lead to an unequal partnership. This is a perfect equality where difference is marked by the free giving and receiving of each other, complementing and strengthening the union between the three to the point of being one person. So I hope that makes it clear. I hope it makes the Trinity an understandable being for you. But I'm aware that it probably not doesn't. Words run out when you try to describe and talk about who God is. And that's okay. There is so much ink spilt about the concept of the Trinity that no one really gets it. And that's okay. We just all add our different thoughts in. And hopefully between all of us, we'll get some approximation of who God is. I don't think we'll ever really understand until we stood before him in heaven. And probably not then anyway. If we could understand God wholly and fully, then that probably wouldn't actually be God, but just our creation of God, whose ways are not our own and whose thoughts are far, far beyond us. God is a mystery. He is beyond us and that's okay. But it's still worth thinking about these things. And for three, three reasons particularly, which is spelt out in our um, reading for today from 2 Corinthians. First, we belong to God and he is our God. We belong to him and he belongs to us. Second, he loves us and we love him back in response. And third, we too are called to live in community with God and with others different to ourselves. We see those reasons reflected in that Trinitarian blessing that Paul finishes his second letter to the Corinthians with. In verse 13 from chapter um, verse 13 from that reading, Paul says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Now, I said earlier that knowing God as the Trinity is a defining idea behind how, behind how I want to live, who I want to be, 
and what I understand about the church in the world. Now that's really a pointless statement, unless I work out what that desire means practically. So here's what I think about what that means, given all I've said about God as a trinity so far. So firstly, God is grace personified, in that within himself, each of the three give all of themselves to the others, withholding nothing. Then through Jesus the Son, God, God gives all of himself to humankind, to you and to me. It's, it's the ultimate sacrifice and grace or gift of love. I want to be someone who lives in that kind of grace, where I give myself and all that I am, all that I have, generously to God and to others. Not withholding myself, my money, my stuff, my time or energy, knowledge or care, but being for others the broken bread that Jesus gives to us all. To do that at all, I do need to be self-aware of my own needs and make sure I stay healthy and well, otherwise I will have nothing to give. Too often I feel pilled in so many different directions. I run out and I need to go back to God. And that means retreating from people to be with him. But beyond looking after myself so I can continue to give, I want to be someone who lives graciously. I want my living to be hallmarked by compassion, forgiveness, generosity and care. So in order to do that, I keep looking back at my days and weeks in order to review if that's happening and how I can do or live better. And then secondly, God as three persons is a mutual act of love, where each of the others creates space for the other two to be themselves. Each person fully gives to and receives from the others, enabling each to be the most they can be. I want to be someone who loves others and so creates ways for people to be the best version of themselves to be nurtured into the fullness of themselves. I can care for people myself. I can do ministry. I'm not a bad vicar. But more than that, I feel called as a leader to be someone who enables us all to do for others, us all to do be, be, be in ministry. I want to be someone who encourages and releases, coaches and facilitates others in their calling and ministry so that they grow in, every one of us grows in to our full maturity as people of God, the most and the best we can be. The last thing I want is to be someone who takes up all the space and allows no one else to join in. I try to monitor how I'm doing that and listen to others to see if that's happening. I'm not always brilliant at it, at any of these, but I do keep trying. Thirdly then, God as three persons in an intimate relationship is always in perfect and full communion with each other. We too are called into relationship with him and with others. And if you look at our image for today, the Trinity icon by Anton Rublev, then you will see the table of the three seated persons of God. And in the middle on the floor, moving out towards you, the audience, is a path to the table, a path inviting you into communion with God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Our primary reason for being, for being at all, for existing, is communion with God and with others. Without that communion in community, we can't practice grace or love. We have no one to be gracious to or to love. I want to be someone who is in communion with God and in community with others. The greatest expression of the commandments of God is to live, to love God and to love others. That's what Jesus told us. And that means being with people, with God. God is a relationship and love is worked out in relationship. So I need to live in relationship with God and with others in how I use my time and gifts and energy. I need to balance all those different relationships I have and recognise too that I can't be in a healthy relationship with anyone unless I'm first in a relationship with God. He has to be the one, uh, they together have to be those who inform who I am as I move into relationship with others. Now it's more difficult to know my own motives and review my relationships well, but I start with an occasional examination of firstly my own devotional times, my time with God, and how I then bring him into all the different moments of the day as well, not just my set devotional times, my quiet times. And then off the back of that, I look at who, how and who, with whom I am in community 
and how it's all working. This last um, about being in communion, in community with others, is what I understand our purpose to be as a church as well. To be those who together are in communion with God and each other and with the wider world around us. And to be those who are sent to baptise, teach and nurture new disciples in Jesus. So they too can enjoy the grace and love of God and be in communion with the Father, Son and Holy Spirit alongside us. That's our second reading from Matthew 28. And those two readings go together really well. Living well in these ways means then that I have to be quite intentional. And I'm very aware that I'm not always good at it or get all this right. This sermon is as much a reminder to me as what I need to do and how I need to grow more into being who God created me to be, as it is for anyone else who wants to think about how they live for God. But living for God in these ways is my desire. For me, pursuing this Trinitarian way of living based on God as a Trinity is holy living and my purpose in life. In Leviticus, we're told to um, be holy as God is holy. And for me, that means trying and pursuing a Trinitarian way of living that is about grace, love and communion. So questions for you to take away this week and think about how do you Firstly, how do you live for God? What are the, the, the key aims of your living for God? For me, it's to be gracious, to be loving, to be in communion. What are yours? And how are those measurable? How do you review and measure and keep them sustained? Without being able to assess and review and without sustaining those, they will fall to pieces. So how do you do that? practically as well so how do you live for God and how do you keep that going and make sure that that's happening let's be quiet for a moment and just let God's word sink into our hearts and souls and minds and bodies and then I'll lead us in prayer before handing back to Jackie so a moment of quiet Lord, I thank you that you are ours and we are yours. I thank you that you call us to live for you. And as we try to do that in whatever way we feel called to, would you help us to be better at it, to know how we're doing and to keep, keep seeking you, to keep choosing to live for you. Help us to be yours for this world as well as for you. Help us to love others and to invite them into knowing and loving you too. Lord, we love you. We choose you. Help us to be yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jackie, over to you. Keep us going. Thank you, Amanda. We now come to our time of confession. This is where we think about and recall those things which we are sorry for. Things which we know can detract us from God and of how God is calling us to be the people he wants us to be. So let's just take a little moment to think about the past week or few weeks. Think about the things that you may have said or done or thought and bring these before God as we ask for his forgiveness. God of amazing love and unexpected grace, open our eyes that we may see you, especially in those times when we feel abandoned by you. Forgive us that we so easily allow circumstance to blind us to your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Touch our lives that we may know you, especially in those times when we feel unable to cope. Forgive us that we too frequently mistrust your power. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Fill our hearts that we may become like you, especially when your message needs to be heard. Forgive us that we forget who we are 
children of God, with your spirit in us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we say together, Lord, we are hurting, we are broken, and we have wounded others because we too often follow you in name alone. Forgive us and invite us again to be your disciples, we pray. And may this act of prayer be a first step along the road to obedience that you call us to walk. So may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're now going to continue in prayer and we turn to say the words of the Creed together, remembering that God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is always with us. So we say together, I believe in God, the Father of all, the creator of the universe, who spoke, let there be light, and there was light, setting in motion all of creation and blessing it to this day. I believe in Jesus Christ, the light that shines in the darkness. The darkness cannot overcome it. He embodied humanity in the image of God and suffered for the greater good. He atoned for our sins and died on the cross for us. God's saving grace. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the guiding light of God in our world. Through his spirit, God conquers the darkness of human sin, helps people grow and become the people they are meant to be. I believe in the power of transformation, here in this world and in the world to come. Amen. So now Gillian and Paul are going to lead us in our prayers of intercession, followed by the Lord's Prayer. So thank you, Paul and Gillian. These prayers of intercession are based on Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Jesus called all of his disciples to do his work, even though some doubted. Father God, some of us may be doubtful, feeling weak and weary. Strengthen us to work for you. Jesus told his disciples to make disciples of all nations. Lord Jesus, we bring the nations before you, especially remembering all those who are dealing with the coronavirus pandemic at this time. We think of those countries who are on the news at the moment. Think about Brazil, our world mission partners in places throughout the world as well, including Peru, Nicaragua, Malawi, Sierra Leone and Kenya. Lord Jesus, we bring before you North America and the riots that are happening in various towns and cities across the country. Lord Jesus, we pray for peace, reconciliation. And Lord Jesus, we bring before you Hong Kong and the people of that island. We pray for peace and reconciliation there also. Jesus told his disciples to teach others his commandments. Holy Spirit, we pray for the work of your church in teaching about you. Father, Son and Spirit. We especially pray for our Archbishops, Justin Welby and John Sentamu, for all bishops, for all who are on the committee liaising with the government to try and think of a way forward of how we may open our church buildings once again. Pray for wisdom and discernment. And Lord, we pray for all our clergy in Liverpool Diocese. 
for our bishops, our archdeacons, area deans and all vicars, chaplains and clergy. We pray for their continued health through this time. Jesus promised his disciples that he would always be with them. God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we bring to you our own desires and difficulties, our praise and our pain. We especially remember and lift before you all those people on our news sheet today. And now I'd like to invite us all to spend some time in quiet, just bringing before God those people and places who he's put on your heart this morning, for those who are sick, for the families of those who have died. Amen. And we say together, may God, God the, the Father, Father hold us, us. May, may God, God the Son renew us, us. May God the Holy Spirit inspire us, and may God the three in one be with us now and always. Amen. And now we finish with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we're now going to share in the peace together. You may want to stand or remain seated, however you feel comfortable. What's important is that we are sharing that peace with one another. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. Let us rejoice and be glad. The peace of the triune God be always with you and with all who call upon his name. We're now going to continue with our worship with our next song, which is Hear the Call of the Kingdom. And this is being led by Nick. Take it away, Nick. Hear the call of the kingdom. Lift your eyes to the king. Let his song rise within you as a fragrant offering of how God in rich mercy came in Christ to redeem all who trust in his unveiling grace. Hear the call of the kingdom to be children of light with the mercy of heaven, the human. is right, that the life of Christ may shine through him. King of heaven, we will answer the call, we will follow, bring it home to the world, filled with passion, filled with power to proclaim salvation. at the wonder of the cross Bring in peace and forgiveness and a hope yet to come Let the nations put their trust in Him King 
The blessing we're going to um, get together again and share coffee over the virtual coffee morning the link is available in the email that you sent out um, and then directly after the blessing we're also going to watch a short video clip from Lizzie and Dave so please do stay and uh, watch that so let's play may God give you for every storm a rainbow for every tear a smile for every care a promise and a blessing in each trial. For every problem life sends, a faithful friend to share. For every sigh, a sweet song and an answer to each prayer. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love now and forever. Amen. So go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, we will. Um, we just wanted to say um, a massive thank you to everyone at St Luke's um, because we're just about to move out of this house and the reason we've been able to live here the last couple of years uh, is because of your generous giving and the giving of um, the deanery. Uh, without that, Story House wouldn't have been able to continue. We wouldn't have been able to stay here in Crosby and keep doing the ministry and the mission that we've been doing. Um, and it's given us enough time to uh, figure out some alternative sources of funding and all that kind of thing and uh, for all that stuff to, to carry on. So thank you so much. Yeah, we're so grateful for your generosity. Um, yeah, it's enabled us to stay here and yeah, the next um, phase is really exciting as we move into a new house um, in Waterloo. So um, we still believe that God has called us to, to Crosby um, and to serve him here. And we're committed to staying here um, and developing the ministry that you guys um, invested in and started with us. You're very much a part of the story um, of Story House from the very beginning. And we're so grateful to be able to partner with you in this mission to connecting with people that just aren't coming to church so thank you and I just really pray that God would bless you for your generosity to us especially as we come out of this season with a lot of uncertainty um, especially financial uncertainty that God would bless your generosity towards us that you'll be able to go on to fund and grow um, new projects initiatives new mission and that your that St Luke's Church would grow out of this and new people would come to faith yeah so thank you again we're still very much a big part of the St Luke's family and we'll still see you around uh, and all of that it's just the next chapter in this exciting journey so we will see you all around the cafe will be open again one day so keep your eyes fixed for that as well and we'll see you there for a coffee yeah love you lots love you bye, bye.